The goal for this problem is to rewrite the equation so you have log of one thing on the left is equal to the log of just one other thing on the right. In this equation, the left side is set up nicely. It's log of one thing. But on the right, we actually have two logarithms, and I only want one. Once you have one log equaling another, essentially, you can cancel them and equate the two things that are left over. So the question is, how do I take the right side and write it as one logarithm? The property that we're going to use is, if you have the log of two things, two expressions that are multiplied together, you can split it up into the sum of those two expressions within the logarithm. So I'm going to take this expression, which looks like this. I'll write it as one logarithm. I'm just going to multiply x plus 2 and 7 together. This is what my equation becomes. I'm doing nothing to the left. It is log of 6x minus 8. However, on the right, that is log of x plus 2 times 7. So now what I can do is ignore the logarithms, essentially canceling them from the problem. And what is left over is 6x minus 8. And on the other side, I have x plus 2 multiplied by 7. I, I don't like the 7 here. I think I'm going to multiply it into the parentheses to give me 7x and then 14. So if I distribute this 7 in, what I have is 6x minus 8 is equal to 7x plus 14. This is the first thing that they're looking for us to enter in, is just the equation itself. So like this is the thing that you would enter for part A. But of course, they want you to continue this and say, well, can you solve this equation? And does it actually give you a solution? Or hey, maybe there's infinitely many solutions, or hey, maybe there's no solutions. So I basically want to solve this for x and see if it works within the original equation. So I'll write the thing over again. We have 6x minus 8 is equal to 7x plus 14. Uh, I guess what I'll do is subtract 6x from both sides, which gives us negative 8 is equal to x plus 14. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll subtract uh, 14 from both sides. And I get negative 22 is equal to x. So if there is a solution to this equation, it would have to be this number here. It'd be very tempting to choose a and then put your answer as negative 22. But I have to be careful here. Negative 22 is a solution to this equation. The second those things go back into the logarithm, potentially it might create some type of error. So let's just try it out. I'm going to check if the left side equals the right side if I put negative 22 in place of x. Does this equal log of negative 22 plus 2 plus log 7? If they're equal, excellent. That means I have a solution. If they're not, then I don't have any solution whatsoever. So I got my calculator here. And then let's see, log of this number. Oh, it gives me an error message. So like on the left, it's like error. I tried to simplify this and I didn't get anything. And actually, the same thing happened on the right. I, I mean, I didn't actually get a value back. It doesn't matter that they're both an error. It just means they cannot be equal. All this tells me is that those two things are not a number and they're not equal to each other. So there is no solution. This would be the option. There is no solution to this equation. The question is, what went wrong? Here's what went wrong. If you have a logarithm, in this case, we're working with log base 10. If you put a negative number, like negative 20, into the logarithm and you try to enter it, it's going to give you some type of error. You can only evaluate the logarithms for positive numbers. You cannot plug in zero. You cannot plug in a negative value. And that's why 
this number, when I plugged it into this equation, did not work. 